Hi all, for our notable game today I'd like to show you another amazing game from the remarkable British chess talent, talent Julian Michael Hodgson, a four times British chess champion. Now he's not so active but um, this was 1993 and it was his game against Michael Adams who of course today is a super grandmaster and has been in the 2700 plus club for many years quite consistently. So a very solid super grandmaster. Julian Hodgson kicks off with d4, knight f6, and we have the Trompovsky attack, which Joe Gallagher has once remarked that maybe it should be renamed the Hodgson Trompovsky, because Trump, because Ju Julian really put um, the romp into this opening. <laughs> he made it very exciting and attacking. We see knight e4, and now we have the Raptor variation h4 which has become reasonably popular over the years. h4, c5. Black is not obliged to take that bishop. It's interesting that white is keen to, to get rid of the bishop, but it gets the dynamic h file in return. Uh, d5, and now actually black does grab the bishop. So we have that h file dynamism. g6, it seems very logical to Fianchetto the bishop. Knight c3, we have d6. Just in case white might be interested in d6 at some point, that stopped. a4, bishop g7. Now queen d2, this is interesting, supporting the knight. And after queen b6, here is already a fairly interesting and subtle advanced decision how to actually fend off b2 and the vulnerability of the knight. Some of us might have considered rook b1 here, but it is actually a potential target more so than if the rook just protects like laterally. Because you can imagine things like queen b4 and bishop takes c3 later using a pin. Having as few pins as needed creates greater independence of the opponent's forcing moves. So it seems rook a2, it looks strange, but it might actually be a better way of defending b2 uh, than rook b1. One less pin to worry about. Okay, so we have knight a6 though, and there is a concern knight b4 maybe to kick the rook. e4. Here knight b4 isn't used actually in this position. Uh, possibly white can just move the rook, maybe to even to a3 and then to, even to b3 later. So Adams actually, um, th there's also in this position a particular issue as well to consider on knight b4, which might also being bishop b5 actually with the king still in the center bishop b5 is also uh, on the cards so knight b4 might be interrupted with bishop b5 check so black castles so knight b4 is a kind of nuisance move now maybe uh, and white doesn't actually want to be tested on that it seems uh, that possibility he actually t snaps off the a6 knight and if you look at this game, White has actually volunteered now both bishops. Okay, so he's got two knights against the two bishops. And you might think this is just a weird way of playing. What were we told? Steinitzian positional theory that the bishop pair is valuable. Why, what is White doing with the knights here? And in fact, Black accepts double pawns here for that b file pressure. I guess Queen takes b5. There might be things like knight b5, which is... Uh, potentially annoying uh, and a nuisance maybe uh, but uh, okay but anyway b takes a6 seems you know although it structurally looks unpleasant it seems the more dynamic choice knight g e2 rook b8 and now queen f4 directly threatening to use this battery on the h file so it's not just the knight pair, it's the fact that white's got this active h file as well. Queen a5. And now we have queen h4 threatening mate. Pretty direct. Black sacks a pawn with h5 to block things up. So white's blocking his own attack. Bishop f6, queen g3. And then we see rook b4. Black is threatening. Rook takes e4. So it's white's turn to parry that threat now with castling king away from the center and we have king h7 blocking the pawn so that seems to be the end of white's attack on the h file and the rook has now gone away from the h file and you might think isn't 
this is a bit just odd. Like it's just giving up the bishops, both bishops. One was a function of the raptor though, to give up the bishop with h4. Knight c1. The knight is centralizing though with knight d3 potentially now. And here, if bishop takes, then queen takes is actually possible as well to pin against the queen. So we have c4 taking away knight d3. But it does weaken a bit the d4 square and these squares in general. Queen e3 looking at maybe taking on a7. Black offers the exchange of queens. And white accepts. Rook takes. And after knight d1, you'd think, surely white's just worse here. Not only black has the bishop pair, but <laughs> he's got this beautiful looking b file. How on earth can white wriggle out of this? Let's see what happens. Bishop d7. So there's pressure points as well. c3 blunting the bishop. And also, maybe this d4 square is of use for a knight later. Rook fb8. The knights are stuck defensively, though. Everything's stuck defensively in this position. f4. Okay. King takes, restoring pawn balance. Rook f2, defending again laterally. So minimal pins. Black hasn't got anything to munch by force. Bishop h4, rook d2, bishop f6. And now an improvement is made to white's position. Now that this knight has been relieved by the rook laterally defending, the knight is now able to move to e3, a central location, and hitting c4. c4 is a bit vulnerable. So black is now using an entire rook to defend c4. And now this knight makes a move knight e2 these crafty knights are centralizing a5 and now knight d4 saying to black well do you want to lose your bishop pair it looks like a nice square now that knight on d4 the knights have perked up they've been caffeinated in the position from where they were on c1 d1 so what would you say now is black clearly better with the bishop pair against the knight pair what is going on in this particular position King f2, and it looks as though rook d1 to h1 might be of interest. King g8, knight f3, as though e5 might be of interest. The black steps away from that in advance to give some extra options. We have g4, the knights support g4, this one. Gaining space, rook c5. We have g5 gripping some squares here and you'll notice the square grip might be emphasized more with king g3 a rook coming to the h file and then something like knight g4 to h6 could be unpleasant potentially for black we have rook b8 and king g3 now and black may be in the light of things like this plays what it is, is a radical move plays actually f6 changing the pawn structure now let's look at this critical moment if michael adams didn't play f6 let's have a look at bishop c8 maybe white can put some rooks on the h file but the other concern for black is this c4 pawn here knight d2 and it seems you know the black rooks are the ones that are passive now and white might be able to inflict e5 with advantage, which gives the e4 square tactically to win the exchange. So like this, its tactics dominate the position here, but white would be winning the exchange in, in some sort of position, not too far from the current position. It's, it carries dangers. Yeah, this c4 pawn can be a tactical disaster, basically, potentially. It's, it's interesting because the bishop here you'd think would give black an edge but in this particular position it's dangerous so black did lash out maybe he's, he's trying to open up the position for his bishops it seems logical from one perspective but we have now g takes e takes and now let's move knight h4 and this echo is a bit of a knight coming to f5 against uh, john nunn in the, in the famous game sparrow against nunn in one of the olympiads 
Wags Barth had given up a bishop but got this f5 knight. Here it seems very dangerous that f5 square. Rook e8 sacking g6 ball for e4. Uh, here it's protected and black protects his pawn now and we have f5 and you'll notice white's pawns are really quite aggressive here and they do support the knight outpost g6 is supported rook b8 and now rook a1 yes the rooks seem a little bit more flexible as well although the rook you'd think is tied down to a4 for the moment it's not used after rook b7 it's the other rook that comes to h2 and there's a clear idea maybe now of knight g4 at some point and maybe knight h6 we have bishop e8 knight g4 there's also uh, another idea potentially that this could be useful rook h7 with knight uh, knight h6 after so king g8 stops rook h7 anyway but rook h1 rook a h1 yes this infiltration is really dangerous and i think well it's getting through here now whatever black does adams tries rook c to c7 and we have an exchange sack now rook h8 check bishop takes temporary exchange sack because it's actually winning material by force if king f7 then that's just it looks totally like a, a mating net here of the check a near mating net anyway let's have a look at this position maybe just check here is, is crushing and then knight takes f6 pardon me so in this position if king f7 let's actually check this out i don't want to spout nonsense to you <laughs> let's check this out with a kibitza no the mating two is not um is it, there's a mating two here basically uh can you spot it <laughs> i'll give you it as a test Oh, I might give him a clue there. Okay, the mating two is just simply check here, and then knight takes f6. So yeah, black is stuck here after this. He can't play king f7, that's a mating two because of the, ch the check, and then knight takes f6. So he plays king g7, offering the e8 bishop. Yeah, and now this is, is just horrendous. Rook takes b2. Knight f8, the knight is coming to e6 with devastating effect. King f7, rook a8, and now knight e6 for rook f8 is on the cards. Rook cb7, knight e6 now here, and black is in big trouble. Uh, there is a mate in free threatened with knight h6 check. King e7, knight g8 check, king d7, rook d8 checkmate. Uh, just to show you that, to, to be clear, this is threatens. Well, black actually uh, resigned here, but let's say rook c2. I'll show you the mate check. Check with the knights coming like this is quite amusing for the king. Yeah, that checkmate. Now, if black tries to parry with rook b8, then rook takes a7. And the thing is, we've got a forking possibility so if here we can just fork if nothing else with knight d8 check yeah <laughs> the knights broke through the black's king so i thought it was a quite an interesting game uh to show you how somehow the knights just were absolutely devastating uh, in this game you might think in in this position couldn't black have given up that this isn't good because the knight can come to f5. A knight can come reroute to f5. It's going to be absolutely crushing position, positionally. Uh, if you look at this position here, it's just horrendous. d6 drops. It's just it's not worth looking at. So yeah, the knights just seem to to dominate eventually the position. 
they were they were in passive places at one point and it looked kind of like a bleak scenario so it's fascinating how it it seems the latent pressure on the h file let white stretch out later on the king side in any case um and infiltrate with the knights it seems the knights were really a serious uh, weapon uh, in conjunction with white's more aggressive pawn structure which gave the knights better and better outpost squares i think the earlier decisions to reduce the number of potential pins also with rook a2 that was that was interesting as well about this game now the rooks were defending b2 laterally you know black tried for dynamic pressure on on the b farm b2 but it didn't seem to come to much and eventually white was giving breathing space get, getting breathing space rather to improve the knights more and more and then the space gains created some more knight outposts and then cracking open the h file the exchange stack is just the cherry on top just to break through so i thought it was an interesting game anyway hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it maybe you try this raptor variation it's kind of revolutionary how it interesting how i think he described himself as some, somewhat lazy that's why he didn't pick up mainline theory but he picked up this trompovsky and really made it an aggressive weapon of choice so that, that's pretty fascinating as well from the opening perspective. Okay, comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.